I thank the Council General. The next item is the topical questions, and the first question comes from Julie Morgan. Uh, what are the implications for Wales following the decision to hold a public inquiry into the contaminated blood scandal? Uh, thank you for the question. I welcome the announcement yesterday by the United Kingdom Government of a UK-wide inquiry into the circumstances of this tragedy. We all need to know the truth about what happened, so it's important that those affected have their say about the inquiry's approach and remit. I have previously called for such an inquiry and I have written today to the Secretary of State for Health and expect full engagement with those affected in Wales. Um, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that response. Um, campaigners and members of the Assembly Cross-Party Group on Haemophilia and Contaminated Blood, many of whom have campaigned for 30 years for this public inquiry, have told me that the inquiry must have the power to compel witnesses, as previous inquiries did not. There must be full disclosure of documents, because it is alleged that some of these have been destroyed and that medical records were destroyed or tampered with. They want to know why blood products continue to be used and warnings were ignored and patients were not informed of the risks, why alternative treatments were not used, why mild haemophiliacs were treated with concentrates, why commercial interests took precedence over public safety, why money allocated for self-sufficiency in blood was reallocated elsewhere, why self-sufficiency of blood supplies took 13 years in the UK but only five years in Ireland, why Lord Owen and Lord Jenkins' departmental papers were destroyed under a 10-year rule which does not exist. They want to know information about the Department of Health's inaccurate self-sufficiency in blood products report, which was published in 2006, and they also want the role of the pharmaceutical companies to be investigated. Those are some of those issues. Um, how is the Cabinet Secretary going to use his role to ensure that these uh, people who have suffered so much, bearing in mind that uh, you know, 70 people in Wales died, 273 were infected, and so many others have had their lives ruined. How will you be able to ensure that they have their say in the process, that they are able to have their voices heard? Uh, because the Prime Minister has said that she wants an inquiry that will um, be what the families want, and I think it is um, absolutely essential that uh, people from Wales do have their say. Um, and um, finally, um, I think um, that you have uh, partly covered this, but did the Prime Minister or the, um, health sec the Health Secretary contact you before actually making this announcement yesterday? And I note that you have written um, to, uh, uh, to uh, Jeremy Hunt um, today, but how do you see your involvement in how this um, inquiry is going to shape up? Because we do know that uh, there have been quite a lot of difficulties in deciding on types of inquiries for disasters that have happened. And obviously, I think it's crucial that this comes out with clear answers, because the people who have been affected in this, this is tragic way deserve the truth. Uh, thank you for the, uh, the follow-up question. I want to start by recognising in response not just Julia Morgan's role in campaigning on this issue whilst a member of this Assembly and chair of the cross-party group, uh, but also from her previous years in Parliament with a real and active interest uh, in this issue and the scandal that has affected people right across the United Kingdom, including here in Wales. And this has been an issue where, again, there has been cross-party interest both in Parliament and in this Assembly. I will start with your, your final point, if you like, about the uh, the links between the two governments, and I have to say this is one where I am hoping that there will be a more, uh, a more respectful relationship between the administrations. I previously wrote to Lord Pryor in, on the 20th of October 2016 uh, about this issue, following a response the Prime Minister gave to Diana Johnson and Prime Minister's question in September of that year. I did not receive a response. I then wrote to Jeremy Hunt on the 20th of December 2016, and I did not receive a response to that letter either. If there is to be generally what the UK Government have announced they want to see, which I welcome, uh, a genuine inquiry that listens to the people directly affected and involved, and in response to my constituent colleague Stephen Doughty in Parliament yesterday, the Government again indicated they wanted devolved administrations to be properly involved, well, that does mean there needs to be a difference in approach, rather than simply deciding the remit for themselves at the Department of Health for a UK-wide inquiry, so we have a rather more genuine engagement, not just with the Government, but with the families and the victims themselves as well. 
Because if another inquiry is provided that does not have the power to compel witnesses, that does not provide full and proper disclosure, it won't just simply be a missed opportunity. It will create further anger and mistrust from a group of people that have, been not well, that have not been well treated for many years in the past. So the announcement is welcome, but getting it right and getting the terms right and generally listening to the families affected and to devolved administrations is really important. I completely agree uh, on the, the broad outline about the need for compulsion of witness and disclosure, and I certainly hope we can come to uh, a proper agreement on that so the inquiry will retain full public confidence as it undertakes its work. Angela Burns. Uh, dear uh, presiding officer, um, Cabinet Secretary, I too would like to thank the campaigners and Julie Morgan and the Cross Party Group for their tenaciousness and determination in following this subject to this conclusion. One of the biggest treatment disasters in the history of the NHS, and that was the motion passed in the House of Commons in 2016, and I think it sums up the scale of this scandal um, exactly. What I find almost beyond belief is the evidence that officials in the Department of Health knew or suspected that imported factor concentrates were risky as early as the 1980s, and yet the NHS continued to give that blood out, or those factors out, to haemophiliacs. Cabinet Secretary, will you assure us that there will be total transparency for any records that may be available either in or from Wales to aid in this inquiry? There was, as you know, an independent inquiry instituted by Lord Morris of Manchester, and it took some two years. Cabinet Secretary, will you exert what influence you can to ensure that this inquiry, whilst being thorough, is also timely? Public inquiries have a terrible reputation for getting utterly bogged down in process, but this is about people and the hurt they have suffered, and they want answers. Will you also ensure, and I think Julie mentioned this, that the people in Wales who wish to speak or give evidence are given that opportunity. And I wonder, Cabinet Secretary, if you would actually think about how we might support them to get there and support them in giving any evidence, because I am utterly convinced it will be an exceptionally traumatic occasion for them. And if we can offer support um, to enable them on that journey, I think that would be a very kind thing that you as a government and we as an assembly could do. I'm sure that you will press for complete transparency, but could you assure us that any lessons learnt from the end of this inquiry will be implemented with rigour throughout Wales so that this type of dreadful event can never happen again? And finally, Cabinet Secretary, there is a question of culpability. If people are found to have been mendacious, um, deceitful, fraudulent, um, or even plain stupid, and any of it rebounds on any process, organisation or person in Wales, I would hope that you can reassure us today that you will take appropriate action with them. Uh, thank you for that series of points, which, uh, which I'm happy to say I agree with. I think part of the challenge in this is not just the pain of those families who have lost someone or someone who has, uh, has become infected, but actually much of that is exacerbated by the feeling that there has been a cover-up and that people have not been told the truth and that has not been an accident. That's why the inquiry is necessary and it's also why getting the terms right is necessary as well. And I generally think this is not an issue where the party politics should matter. And to be fair, that has not been the approach to the cross-party group, either in this place or in Parliament. Uh, and I understand completely the call for transparency and for full and proper cooperation. Uh, and I'm happy to confirm that from the government's point of view, where information from Wales uh, is useful for that inquiry, I fully expect there to be full and proper cooperation and transparency. As so people can see that we are generally playing our part and trying to understand why what happened did happen. Uh, and you know, th the reason why we say there always needs to be a UK-wide inquiry is that the powers that exist for the compulsion in the inquiry, but also because these events took place before devolution. And so we were not in control of what happened at that time. And that's really important for people um, who want the inquiry to take place. Uh, I want to be clear on how we can support people. Well, as that depends on the remit and the way in which the inquiry is set up. As a UK-wide inquiry, there needs to be a proper conversation about how people are supported, how about making sure this is a genuine UK-wide inquiry rather than effectively an England inquiry then substituted um, to cover the rest uh, of the United Kingdom. So that has to be a conversation that I want to have with the Department for Health, though, who, um, who did not um, contact the Welsh Government uh, before the answer was made yesterday. 
Um, that was a point that Julie Morgan asked, so that hadn't happened at that point in time. I'm due to speak to someone from the Department for Health next week. Again, it's disappointing when a UK-wide inquiry of this nature is announced that there isn't an earlier uh, conversation with this government. Um, and I don't know again about parties, it's about government-to-government -government relationships and that this isn't appropriate. And actually, there's, there's a real point here about people who believe in the union should actually try and make it work. Um, and it's frustrating when things like this happen that do not do that in a way that actually promotes the interests of the citizen, which is what this is all about. And in terms of, uh, as we are now, I'm happy to confirm that actually the way that blood products are managed now has changed significantly. Uh, and it should not be possible for the same scandal to arise in the same way. Um, it is always possible that people are prepared to collude with each other, but the systems we now have in place uh, mean that blood products in Wales and across the United Kingdom uh, are incredibly, and you can trace where those products have come from. So the screen that takes place now um, it should be a, a real factor for, uh, for assurance uh, for anyone who uses the blood products in Wales or any other part of the United Kingdom. And I, on culpability, some of those matters are not within the remit of this government, but I would expect that any of the findings are used to properly hold people to account as well as to understand and to learn. And I think that is really important. If I may say, I think that um, as well as a cross-party group, uh, it may be sensible for spokespeople from the relevant parties to have a conversation between this week and the next to see if we may be able to find an agreed form of words uh, from, uh, from each of the parties in this place to sign up to in terms of what we would like to see happen uh, in terms of the remit and the management inquiry will run. Uh, and I think as well as government to government conversation, I think all parties may have to sign up to something may be helpful for us to do as well. But I'm happy to take up that conversation with spokespeople after, after today's uh, question. I'd like to uh, take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, Norman and Jennifer Hutchinson, uh, my constituents who have very gently kept up the pressure on me uh, to keep up the pressure, along with uh, Julie Morgan and others here in this chamber, on UK government to press ahead and uh, to help get us to this point. We're not there yet, as uh, Norman and Jennifer said last night to me, with the right leadership uh, on the panel and the right remit, we could achieve the justice which is so badly needed. So we need to make sure that we have those assurances now. Now, in thanking them, uh, I'd like to also place on the record my uh, admiration, as well as thanks to all the families of those affected by this, uh, this scandal for their uh, steady uh, determination uh, to help over many years to get us to this point. And in welcoming uh, the offer of the Cabinet Secretary to work on a perhaps a joint position uh, across parties here, because this has been a cross-party uh, approach. Uh, can I ask him if he will also make sure that he uh, ensures that the families uh, continue to uh, be able to feed into him uh, and his department in guiding uh, him uh, in how they approach um, UK government uh, over this matter to ensure that this uh, is more than the potential of uh, closure, um, but that this does uh, resolve and answer the questions that have been so desperately needed to be asked for so many, so many years. Uh, thank you for, uh, for those points, Rian. Again, I know you're a member of the cross-party group as well and have taken a genuine interest in this uh, issue. And I, too, share the admiration of uh, not just yourself but other members of the Chamber for the tenacity of people who have not given up, not just on fighting for an individual cause for them and their family, but for a much wider cause that affected many other people across uh, Wales and the United Kingdom. Uh, I think it's... It, I also welcome your, uh, your constructive uh, approach to actually the potential for a cross-party letter as well. I think that could be very helpful. In terms of the position about Welsh families, I've made clear that I want to make sure that families are directly and properly involved. And, of course, as a government, we'll need to talk to those people to give them an opportunity to tell us uh, what they want to see, as well as directly trying to speak to uh, the UK government. I think in the position that we take up as a government, well, we want to make sure that we're generally speaking on behalf of those families that have been directly affected. So uh, I am giving thought to how we do that. We have the ability to directly contact those families uh, and to see what they want to do, as well as uh, the, uh, the Haemophilia Society uh, and other support groups who already exist to support uh, a number of those families. And I have in mind uh, the, the, the ten points the Haemophilia Society have already set out previously for their position on the inquiry. So that's a helpful start for us as well, but we need to check out other issues that families directly want to have uh, brought up in the ongoing and unfinished conversation about the membership of the inquiry and its remit. Hello, Diolch Llywydd. 
Uh, I'd like to first of all thank Julie, the cross-party group, and everyone else who's involved in bringing about this inquiry. Um, Cabinet Secretary, I think it's wonderful news that we are finally getting a public inquiry into this terrible scandal. My close friend Faye Denny lost her brother, Owen Denny, who died as a result of contaminated blood. Now, Owen and his family and the thousands of other families who were affected by this terrible scandal will hopefully finally get justice. The NHS is there to save lives, and it very often does, but it totally failed Owen and many people like him on this occasion. So, this dark period in history now needs to be fully investigated, and we must ensure that it can never happen again. Uh, we must also ensure that the voices of Welsh victims and their families are heard. And will you work with the Welsh Government to ensure the inquiry can deliver the truth about this appalling injustice, a truth that is fully transparent at all times? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the comments and questions. Uh, Again, many members in this, in this chamber will be directly affected by knowing someone who's been directly affected by the scandal. Uh, one of what pains is not to try and claim the Welsh Government can uh, write the terms of uh, the remit for the inquiry. Uh, we'll do all that we could and should do uh, to, to influence and to advocate uh, terms of reference that meet the, uh, the needs of families uh, and, and what they actually want to see within the inquiry terms of reference, and I'll be completely transparent with party spokespeople and this chamber uh, on what we are trying to do uh, uh, to, to reach that point. I go to the same point about the time scale as well, because uh, almost all of us will want to see a, a brief time scale, but given the period of time that this is taking place, given the number of documents that are likely to be provided or need to be provided and disclosed and then considered, I would not anticipate a public inquiry being quick. But I think for those that have waited so long to get them to hiring an inquiry, to get the terms right, to make sure all the evidence is right and there's properly time to consider that I think is most important, um, that means inquiry has to be properly equipped um, rather than asking an inquiry with a huge remit with hardly any resources to do so. So they're all points that we'll be making in our conversation with the UK government and points we want to consider together with affected families. But as I say, I'll be completely transparent with this chamber about the efforts the Welsh Government makes to try and advocate for people who live here in Wales. What discussions has the cabinet, uh, cabinet Secretary or the Minister had uh, regarding job losses resulting from the confirmed closure of the DWP offices in Llanelli and other parts of Wales? I have made repeated representations to the Minister for Employment. I made clear my concerns when we spoke on the 5th of July. I will continue to seek assurances about the position of uh, staff who are adversely affected by these changes, and indeed I am meeting with the UK Minister tomorrow to discuss the matter further. That is excellent news. I am sure the Minister will leave no stone unturned, as indeed uh, will uh, my colleague Lee Waters, who is the AM for Llanelli, who is, as we speak, meeting for the second time with Damien Hines from the Department of Worker Pensions and the uh, Griffiths MP, who are trying to gain a last-minute reprieve for what I and they perceive to be a very misguided decision in relation in particular to the Llanelli situation, where we are uh, foreseeing a jo uh, job losses of 146 people. And, uh, despite the fact that Carmarthenshire Council has wor worked hard to secure the uh, offer of alternative offices in Llanelli, and I know the valiant effort efforts on behalf of the Welsh Government, who have offered free office space to keep these jobs locally, the Tory Government have once again turned their backs on West Wales. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree that moving these jobs from Llanelli flies in the face of the UK Government's industrial strategy, which says that it wants to spread prosperity across the United Kingdom? Um, absolutely. I'm very disappointed that the DWP has announced uh, well, last Wednesday the decision to close the Llanelli Benefit Office and the job centres in Mountain Ash, Pyle and Tredigo. Relocating jobs will affect about 150 staff, we understand. I'm also very disappointed that they did not see fit to consult with the Welsh, go Welsh Government about alternative solutions prior to the final decision. And I stated my profound concerns regarding this to um, Damien Hyde last week when I spoke with him on the, the telephone. And I've written several times, uh, both before the general election and afterwards, uh, about this. 
Um, we welcome uh, the relocation of jobs for 93 staff based at the Porth uh, Debt Centre, who will now go to the Tonopandi Job Centre as opposed to Kefili. Um, as was announced earlier in the, in the year. Um, and, and during our conversation, um, the Minister of Employment also indicated to me that he's opening um, what he described as a large modern building north of Cardiff to merge five smaller nearby processing centres. But he didn't give me any details of that, so I'll be pressing him on that tomorrow. I did point out very fervently that we were not looking to consolidate jobs in areas of high employment, but actually we were looking to preserve jobs in areas of lower employment, where the jobs were much... Uh, more important and much needed. Um, we had some discussion about the topography of Wales in that conversation and about how perhaps lines on a map without the mountains in between weren't awfully indicative of uh, uh, people's ability to commute and so on. I will be pursuing that with them tomorrow. Um, but, the, but the bottom line is this. We, 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 we are very, very disappointed that we weren't properly consulted, that, we, uh, that our offers of help with uh, keeping jobs in areas that badly need them were not taken up. I will be seeking constructively to work with him tomorrow about their plans for the future to see if we can influence them to make sure that existing jobs stay in valley communities and other uh, communities where unemployment is a bit higher across Wales. And we will be reiterating our better jobs closer to home policy, not consolidating people in big centres, you know, inevitably further away from where they live. Simon Thomas. Uh, of course, we could be thought uh, about the thing called Shuidiant and the Gwarvod Fobi, a Kavasa and the Navior Kavle Ole, Dad Buishor, Adwan Gwaitha Fashana, Igwir Dwai, Pendavania, and in Wedig and Kidest in Summit Suidi or the Ganol Trace and Essie, see the medical F5 economic Dubrid Yawn, Adwe, see the Shigledig and economic, well, in Igid and Gobod. With the Orca, Bohi with the Ateb, the Boema question of Skuvenedig, I can Bernard all often draw at. A fifth board uh, at Adrian Gwaith of Funchana Gwaid, Navid Nave and Gorvod Kotli Suiv, ahead with the Pendavania de Mantlenelli, on the Kali Adle Oli, on by the Hingobod, uh, Otto of Dathem and Shore, Bodun Sona Madli Oli, Sevetel Doc Penvo, a Haidith, Akman Gubulum Hoseb, uh, get a Kniver or Venawad, Pobble get a Kavival uh, Deba Goval, Pobble get a Plant Ivan, Gar get a Pobble Rieni Menoid, Yestaviad Summit Suivaith. Organo Senesi, Iwisio, Aradaloid Moor, uh, Waskavedig. But he and Benodol, Panachinkur, the Damien Heinz Vori, Ava the Hingovin and Vulpinodol am Guavant Gandave, uh, Osnagos Ruid and Medri, Kamrid uh, Adleoliad, or Herwith, Kavival Deba, Sigenu, Van Goval Plant, Naya Herwith, a special personal Sigidenu, Navi na Dui di Suido Gorvodol and Digwith. Uh, Yaun, or Sipopla Moin, uh, Kamrid. Uh, Kalidi Suido and Weird Vodol, Mohana Matter de Nu, and Avedrikal and Wimiad Navi di Suido God Vodol, at with Vesli Pobel and Medricadri Suiti. Well, indeed, that's very much part of the conversation, and uh, we had a conversation about possible relocation areas for people from Tlatli, and a diverse range of places were mentioned, you know, move, moving me to say, did, did he have a map with the mountains marked on it? Um, uh, one of the one of the areas that was mentioned was for, for a possible relocation to Swansea Waterfront, for example. I was explaining the difficulty of commuting from you know Lethe Centre to Swansea, and that that uh, that might not look like much distance in the southeast, but here in Wales it was really quite a distance. And anyway, the staff are likely to be coming from west of Lethe. Um So I've made all of those points. Uh, we have made the points that we're very unhappy about any kind of compulsory redundancy scheme. I'm, I will be reiterating them. But I would also like to say that where people are affected by redundancy, if that's what happens, and I am being assured at the moment that it, that, that will not happen, but if it does happen, then obviously we will work very hard to make sure that anybody affected gets the full benefit of our REACT services and all the rest of it. So we will want to be talking, uh, getting clarification from the Work Services Director for Wales regarding the timing of the closures, the relocation plans, um, you know, the likely effect on not only the staff, but also the services offered, the service users and travel arrangements for them and adjustment times and so on. Um, and really just getting as much detail as possible, uh, A, to put, uh, you know, to, to continue the pressure on them not to make decisions which are, you know, don't make any sense in the context of Wales, and B, where they do make those decisions to make sure we line up our services um, to, you know, fill in the gaps, really. Kevin David. Um, thank you, uh, Minister, for the responses you've given so far. 
Um, it, it's an interesting comparison with what we were talking about with Tesco's just a couple of weeks ago, where we were concerned that we couldn't uh, influence this large corporate. And now the government, the UK government, which can uh, pay heed to our communities, is doing almost the same thing as Tesco's did, which I found extraordinary. Um, the rumours, for example, are, are, are a huge issue. You mentioned that the relocation to, from the, the DWP in Caerphilly to somewhere north of Caerphilly um, and, 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 and other areas to north of Caerphilly. Well, I've heard possibly through Forest Industrial Estate. I don't know whether that's true or not. Um, but I do know that um, the PCS union, who I've, I've spoken to, have huge concerns about access, particularly for workers in Caerphilly. Uh, Wayne David MP has expressed those concerns, and I stand with him. Um, uh, in, in expressing those concerns today. This also, as you say, flies in the face of Welsh Government policy, where we're trying to bring jobs further north to the Northern Valleys, and, we're moving, and the UK Government is moving things south. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, therefore, will you uh, uh, further commit to, um, when you speak to the UK Government, to commit to um, encouraging them to keep the Caerphilly Centre, uh, to reconsider their plans for the Caerphilly Centre and keep that open as well? Um, yes, indeed. I'm, I'm happy to make that commitment to you. I mean, we will, I hope, be having a broad discussion about exactly what the plans are, why they've seen fit to do this, why they didn't consult with us, uh, and indeed what can be done now. I mean, it's, you know, it hasn't actually happened yet. What can we do at this moment in time to assist? Um, and as I said, to make sure that we understand exactly what the proposals are so that we don't have a rumour mill going on, which has been going on for some time, and that staff can be reassured, and indeed service users can be reassured about where they will... Uh, where, where the offices will be located in the future. So, as I said, we'll be, we'll be looking for clarification regarding the timing of the closures, relocation of staff, what's happening to the services, the whole range of issues around the relocation of the offices. And I will be reiterating that this is absolutely not at all what um, the UK government has said about in its industrial strategy about bringing employment to areas where, uh, it, you know, there's less employment than you might get in urban, in, in urban centres. And it's absolutely cuts across our own better job closer to home agenda. Neil Hamilton. When uh, the Minister meets the UK Minister tomorrow, she'll be able to say that she has the united support of all the Assembly members for Mid and West Wales, and uh, indeed for my party as well as that of Plaid Cymru, uh, in what she says. Uh, and uh, she's absolutely right, of course, in relation to West Wales, one of the poorest parts, uh, not just the United Kingdom, but in fact Western Europe, that it's quite wrong for government to take what might be called a sort of hard-nosed commercial view of relocation, simply to save a few bob here and there, uh, and to behave in the way that a company like Tesco has behaved, as Heaven Davis has just observed. Um, and insofar as this goes quite contrary to the policy of the Welsh Government uh, in this respect, this is the third time this afternoon we've heard that UK government ministers have had the lack of basic good manners to consult with, or at least to speak with, Welsh government ministers before decisions are taken which affect the vital interests of Wales. We heard this from the Council General, we've heard it also from the Cabinet Secretary for Health, and now uh, from the Minister for Skills and Science, and that uh, UK government ministers need to learn that devolution is a reality and that they need to respect the interests of Wales as represented in this assembly. Um, can I also say that this decision uh, just shows that merely because jobs are public sector jobs, they're not necessarily safe and secure. Uh, and what is vitally necessary is that we have greater diversification of the Welsh economy because two thirds of our national income ultimately uh, depends <coughs> upon government spending of one kind or another, and we desperately need to get more private sector investment and better paid jobs in Wales. Um, well, I'm, I'm very grateful for the cross-party support. I mean, it, it, it makes no sense to us to move jobs from areas that need them badly into areas where employment is much higher. I don't have all the details of the plan for the big new office, nor of the... Um, closure of some of the, I presume, some of the satellite offices around it, but I will be seeking clarification on that, and indeed we will be seeking to 
uh, affect the location of that centre. I, I don't have the detail of that yet, but we will be seeking to get it. In terms of the diversification, I, mean, I don't disagree with that really, but also we want the UK government to commit to keeping good public sector jobs in areas of Wales where that employment is needed. They're often seed jobs, they often keep a small local economy afloat, you know, uh, all the cafes and little shops around these centres also struggle once they, once they leave, and it is often the centre of a small little ecosystem. So whilst I don't disagree with the diversification point, I also want to underline that we want a commitment from the UK government to use its money and employment wisely and well in order to support other industry and employment in those areas. Finally, Jane Bryant. Diolch Lewis. Uh, we know that the scope of the DWP changes also include colos in their site and Sovereign House in Newport. Uh, this will mean relocating 249 jobs which are in the heart of our city to uh, somewhere north of Cardiff. The loyal staff at Sovereign House deserve better and the DWP faces losing highly skilled and experienced workers because of unnecessary changes. The lack of consultation, as other members have said, is absolutely deplorable, and this goes against the government's policy for jobs closer to home. In fact, these plans seem to have been drawn up by the UK government with no understanding of the staff they currently employ, commuting times, or indeed the geography of Wales. My colleagues Paul Flynn and Jessica Morden MP are leading this in Parliament, but can you assure my constituents that in your discussions with the UK government and ministers tomorrow, that you will do everything everything in your power to protect those jobs in Newport. Absolutely. As I said, we're trying to get a picture of, of the situation across Wales. Um, we are not at all happy about the consolidation of jobs into one particular area. We haven't been consulted about it. It appears to us to have been driven by estate matters rather than jobs and employment matters, which is, in my view, not the right way round. Um, we have offered to work with them, and indeed we are currently, and I extend the offer now, uh, hoping to work with them about um, what their office requirements are that we haven't been consulted. Um, I have offered a, officials as contacts to have that discussion with them, and I will certainly be making the point about Newport as, alongside all of the other, other offices that are faced uh, with closure in this, what I can only describe as ill-considered and ill-thought-out proposal. question Ola Mohamed Ashka. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. Will the Cabinet Secretary make a statement on how the Welsh Government intend to prevent job losses at Coil Colour in Newport, please. Yes, my officials have been in dialogue with the company since the flooding of the premises occurred. On July the 10th, we were notified that the company intended to enter into administration, but we stand ready to help in whatever way we can. Thank you for the answer, Minister, but I'm sure the Cabinet Secretary shares my concern about the situation of Coil Colour and the threat presented to the jobs of over 40 workers employed there. I understand this situation has arisen from a dispute between the Welsh Government and Coil Colour over the payment of compensation after the company premises were flooded in 2016. The Managing Director insists a compensation payment had been promised, but the Welsh Government denies this. Will the Cabinet Secretary personally intervene to save the jobs at Coil Colour, and will he agree to investigate this matter fully? to see how this dispute could have arisen and make a statement as a matter of urgency, please. Can I thank the member for his question and his concern, which is shared by many other members in this chamber. Indeed, the local member, Jane Bryant, has discussed um, her concerns over the future of the company with me on numerous occasions and made very strong representations. Um, essentially, I think it would be inappropriate for me to comment or speculate over the viability of the company were it with the flood not to have occurred, but in terms of what happened with the flood, normally, in this sort of instance, an insurance company would pay out but then pursue the parties who are liable. In this case, Welsh Government, as the landowner, um, actually had the site licence to Titerian at the time of the flooding. In turn, um, the land was occupied by their contractors, Walters, who were remediating the site, in preparation for a housing scheme. Now, as I say, normally the claim would be processed through an insurance company and they would then pursue us if we were liable. That has not happened. Um, officials have been in very close dialogue with the company and I've been taking a very keen interest in this matter 
over many months. We helped to facilitate support through Finance Wales back in December 2016, enabling the com company to continue to trade without, um, without major issues whilst also pursuing their insurance claim. Now, I would reject any claim that a without prejudice payment was ever promised by the Welsh Government. What did happen was that after the flooding, a letter was received from Coil Colours solicitors um, relating to a claim for £600,000. The Welsh Government instructed external solicitors who invited details of the claim, but the company has not progressed it. Um, we did send a second letter in April. Um, we received notification of another claim relating to a payout made to the landlord of the building amounting to £58,000, but the advice from our solicitor remains that we should not take any actions or make any payments relating to the claim of the property until we have had further details, including the full basis of both claims. That is both responsible and necessary. However, I am concerned about the future of the employees in the company, and we stand ready to help the bank and Grant Thornton in any way possible should a new buyer come forward and take over the operation. We have tried and tested means of intervening when there are um, job losses. Again, we would deploy the sort of support that we are planning on deploying if job losses um, uh, occur at Tesco in Cardiff, for example. Jane Bryant. Cabinet Secretary, I know that you and your officials have been in discussions with Coil Colour since the flood um, and made available the support of Finance Wales and Business Wales. Will you continue to do all that you can to examine if there is a way in which the company and staff can be supported at this very difficult time? Yes, absolutely. I uh, give my undertaking to ensure that officials continue to work with the company and with the bank and Grant Thornton to do all that we can to save the company and also the jobs that are taken by very skilled people, approximately 50 people are employed at the site. I should say as well that the support that we were able to assist with through um, Finance Wales was via their rescue and restructure fund, which essentially meant that because of state aid rules, we could not apply additional funding on top of that. But we will continue to work with the company to try to secure a future for mm. it and for the 50 plus workers based at the site. Stefan Lewis. Uh, um, it, this is very concerning news um, that, a, that a company uh, with a good reputation that supplies multinational companies has um, had some very harsh things to say about um, Welsh Government. And I'd be very interested to hear the Cabinet Secretary's view on why he believes um, the company has got uh, some very serious uh, things to say uh, about the way the Welsh Government has, has handled this uh, situation. Um, obviously, 50 families stand to uh, be devastated uh, if the company was to wind down. And we understand that uh, there's been an increase in, in inquiries from, uh, from companies uh, in terms of being supplied by Coil Colour, despite the fact that they haven't uh, got the means to purchase uh, stock um, at the moment. Um, on the point of the uh, without prejudice payment, so can he clarify again that there wasn't such an offer made? Absolutely. And perhaps uh, can he shed some light onto what offer was made and where the misunderstanding uh, may have arisen from? I understand that the flooding uh, came from land uh, that was owned by the Welsh Government adjacent uh, to the company. Does he believe that the Welsh Government's got a bit more of an obligation, therefore, to intervene rather than just point them in, in the direction um, of Finance Wales? And on the broader point, uh, particularly when we think of Wales's reputation as a, a business-friendly company, um, what does this say that uh, the best we can offer SMEs, Welsh-based SMEs, is a, a Finance Wales loan with an 11% interest rate when many people are wondering how m large multinationals seem to get a better deal? I'd reject many of the claims made by the member. The Rescue and Restructure Fund um, that was utilised in this instance did carry an interest rate of um, 11%, but that fund was required because there was limited scope elsewhere to draw down the necessary resources to keep the company afloat during that difficult time. No without prejudice, and I'll state it again, no without 
um, prejudice payment was ever promised. However, what Welsh Government was able to do was act as a broker, um, ensuring that support from Finance Wales was forthcoming. We examined every other option for supporting the company with financial resource, but as I've just said to Jane Bryant, that was not possible because further support would have contravened state aid. But we work very closely with um, the business community to find ways of overcoming problems such as this. But this, I, and I go back to the point that I made to um, Mohamed Ashka, it would be inappropriate for me to speculate over the extent to which the flooding event led to the company entering into the sort of problems that it has encountered. In terms of the flooding, I've already given details of the, um, of the occupiers of the land and the normal process would be followed by the insurance company seeking uh, compensation from um, the liable party. That process has not been pursued. Instead, we received, received as I've said to two members now, um, a letter from the company's solicitors calling on us to provide £600,000, but it would not be appropriate to um, pro pro progress that without the details that are required. We have not yet had the respon response that we have asked for in spite of writing on two occasions. Thirdly, I think it's absolutely vital that we view the continued employment of the 50 uh, workers at the site as our priority right now. And for that reason, officials are continuing to engage with the company to identify a means of keeping the site in operation. The member is right, provides an incredibly valuable service and has many suppliers who do require the company to continue operating. And I'm confident the bank and Grant Thornton are doing all they can to identify a buyer. Certainly we stand ready to help in any way we possibly can.